Right, welcome to 10 things we love. And this is the first one we're doing about video games. We've done lots of rock and metal stuff so far leading up to this, and now it's finally, finally decided to touch upon uh, a video game one. Also, with a different person. How you doing? Yeah. Rapture's Lust from uh, GPHBL. Yep, otherwise known as Liam. I'm trying to make sure yeah. we use our real names now as <laughs> well. Liam, yes. names. <laughs> we write under those names, but we've all got real names. We are... Uh, yeah, because everyone would be used to seeing Brennan in these, so it's nice to get someone else. Different location as well. Yeah. All the way in Dover. So yeah, we decided to do a video game series. Um, one whole series rather than an individual game, because that this series in particular, doing each individual game, would be easy at first, but then when we hit the later numbers, it becomes a serious problem. Because it's <laughs> Resident Evil. It's ten things we love about Resident Evil, the series overall. Um, as we always say in all these videos, Partially tongue-in-cheek, partially serious, um, strong opinions. Don't get too mad if you say something you hate, basically. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to rock, rock, uh, start off with, with my first one. Again, in no particular order, This one of the things I love about the Resident Evil series is that up to a point, it was untouchable. Now, if you consider one, two, three, four, uh, Code Veronica... Mm. That, that that was a such a run of games that no one could complain. It was only when we hit five that we sort of people started to go, huh? Yeah. But up to those points, it was untouchable, and each game almost arguably changed as well. Like one the difference between Resident Evil one and two is massive. Not oh. so much three, but Cold Veronica massive. Yeah. Four massive. You is know, this, is this your first first point? Yeah, the entire. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, that's interesting because uh, ironically, my first point is um, I love that it has the ability. The series has the ability to evolve. You know, it has, oh. it has obviously a bold for the worst, as you said, about five and five and six. Yep. But on the whole, yeah, it has a, a really strong ability to evolve and change, which, you know, the unpredictability of what you're going to get from a Resident Evil game, you know, you can see it in a positive light and a negative light, but I think, yeah, that's that's a really good quality of the series, really, is it kind of has changed with the times, you know, because if it had stuck with the earlier games, the classics and the tank controls and the fixed cameras and the, it, you know, it, it couldn't have stayed like that forever. It had of to course. change. And the fact that it's stuck around for so long, I think, is, is due to its ability to evolve, yeah. No, 100%. In fact, you talk about the evolution is after X amount of times of not evolving uh, between five, 4, 5, and 6, they finally clocked it away and then evolved it into what we got with Resident Evil 7. Yeah, I mean, like Resident Evil 4 couldn't be any more different from like the first game. Mm -hmm. They're almost, you know, they're so different in every yeah. single way. But, yeah. <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's interesting because my second one is um, Resident Evil 7. One of the things I love is Resident Evil 7. It was a return, what a return to form for the series. Um, I didn't play it for quite a while uh, until it came out, you know, the hype and all that. And I'm a bit like, well, isn't it just kind of Resident Evil but Outlast? No, it's not. It's Well, it seems like um, the Resident Evil games, they uh, they go for what is popular at the time. Yep. Like, you know, everyone hated on like 5. But yep. that was a more action-oriented game because at the time, you know, Call of Duty is still a huge thing. Yep. But it's action games were such a huge, they were huge at the time. And they still are, obviously. But that was like the real pinnacle, I think, that period of time. And yeah, I think they, they decided to try and gear towards that audience to try and bring them in to, to get uh, new fans and stuff like that. Yeah. And I don't know if it works, it works out or whatever, but... Well, I think it was still very successful. I think a lot of time that's a reflection that people look at Resident Evil 5 because obviously if Resident Evil 6 hadn't happened, I reckon Resident Evil 5 would be thought of a bit more fondly. Yeah, I mean, I, I you know, we'll get on to more talking about like our fond memories of certain games. Oh yeah, in of course. Series, but... But no, yeah, I think like with Seven, was, yeah, that was clearly because at the time those sorts of games are well, like right now they're still quite popular. Yeah, games like Outlast and obviously with the whole PT. Uh, of like, course, I think that was a massive influence on on the game. So yeah, I'm not sure what the next game is going to be, but I'm not sure. Like, depends what the next new trend is, I guess. You know, one of the things that said to stick into that same point, but Battle Royale maybe. Yeah. Well, God, yeah. <laughs> well, they tried that with the online. Well, we'll get was, to. We'll have yeah. talk. Be talking about that online in the hate video. Um. Yeah, the last thing I'll say as well is I really admired how after a uh, pretty nuts like first half of that game, it does return, start to become more Resident Evil as you go on. You start seeing clues and links and stuff like that, obviously leading to an ending. I'm not going to spoil it here, but an ending that ties it in nicely yeah, enough. Yeah, I mean, I remember when, when, when I played it, like, and when I, saw, when I saw the trailers, it didn't look anything like a Resident Evil yeah. game. And but like when you play it, it's like more like a Resident Evil game than some of the other games in the series. Yeah, yeah. Like it's it's crazy. Like you you don't think it's gonna be anything like it, but then it still has like the inventory. Yeah. And like herbs and stuff, they're all there, and it's like somehow they managed to me to mesh these two things together really well. Yeah. Yeah. Go on. What's your next one? Um. 
This is quite an easy one, really, which I think we'll both agree on. But I love the music in Resident Evil. Okay, I've got to jump in and say I've also got the music on my list. Predictably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're big um, soundtrack guys from yeah. in games. And yeah, I mean, um, there's not uh, many games that have delivered music that is like, I hold as, as dear to me, like nostalgia wise. You know, like a piece of music can like, really take you back to the yeah. first time you heard it. Like the first time you enter the police precinct and two. Oh, yeah. That music is iconic. You know, the save room music and everything. You know, it's it really... Yeah, it takes me back when I hear it. Yeah, hundred like percent agree. That. Um, I could probably play uh for a lot of people watching this as well. Play certain parts from Resident Evil One, and you'd be able to tell me which part of the mansion that is based off the yeah, sound. Yeah. Um, iconic things. You talk about the uh the police station Resident Evil Two, but one of the things I highlighted in my thing about the music was, oh, I I, I hope people pe- notice this in the society, but there was a point where Capcom in Resident Evil and a few of the other games basically were unbelievably brilliant at composing and putting together fantastic end credits. Yeah. Uh, Resident Evil 1 had this huge rock one. Resident Evil 2 had two separate ones. One that was soft and one that was a bit more faster. Resident Evil 3 is my favourite because it uses a piano. Mm. Even Resident Evil 4, I think it's called Sorrow, yeah, was yeah. excellent. No, like for a point they were just End credits, they nailed that shit. Yeah, so you know? it made it something you didn't want to skip. Like yeah. End credits, normally you just want to get through it as quickly as possible, see if there's a cutscene at the end or something, but you didn't want to skip through that. No, no, absolutely. Music. So impressive. I completely agree. <laughs> Because I had the same one, you go again. Okay. Um, I love how unintentionally funny it has the ability to be. <laughs> really? <Okay>. Like, <laughs> obviously, you can talk about the laughable voice acting from the first game. That's of course. legendary. Um, not forgetting the hilarious final boss uh, fight in Resident Evil 5 with Wesker in the volcano. Oh, of course. Chris Redfield famously punches a boulder. Yep. I mean, you can't, that's pretty funny. There was for ages as well, we used to uh, uh, talk about um, talking about that ending where we'd, uh, analy- we analysed whether or not Wesker had potentially been hit by the rocket launcher because, oh, it looks like it might miss. <laughs> yeah. And stuff like that. You know, <laughs> well, he did stay stay dead at the moment. Anyway, at the yeah. moment, yeah. But yeah, I mean, also the franchise as a whole, the overall plot of the whole franchise is just such a convoluted, crazy <laughs> mess. mess. You've just got to laugh, really, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> I fuck knows where what where. They where. use like every letter of the alphabet for a new virus. Yeah, and it's just like it's ridiculous. It's true. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good. 
Um, well, my next one is that basically I've grown up with these games. Um, both the first and second hold special places in my heart, particularly. But like, and this is actually can relate. You can relate to this as well. Is ultimately when we first came to this country uh, from we're not originally from England. Um, Resident Evil 1 was basically released or near release and so on. So like that was one of my earliest memories. Sega Saturn version, I believe it was as well, which our mm. older brother Brendan um, had the Sega Saturn. Yeah. Um, and that was our first introduction to that. And so basically we've been following this series for oh, most of our lives. Oh, most oh, of our li yeah. adult, certainly our adult lives and teenage lives. Yeah, it's a very important like, game series for mm. like, you know, shaping the gamers that we came, became to be and like, you know, again, musically everything you know yeah. it's very important to our background and our upbringing you know yeah yeah um my next one is i really love this quote from resident evil one by barry okay and it is we should start from the first floor okay and jill here's a lock pick it might be handy if you the master of unlocking take it with you that one specifically <laughs> i love that i love that because i couldn't do it justice as i couldn't do it as badly as it was done you did it pretty well but like <laughs> i just think that's a really funny quote let's search for him separately i'll check the dining room again okay i'll try the door on the opposite side this mansion is gigantic we could get into trouble if we get lost we should start from the first floor okay and jill Here's a lockpick. It might be handy if you, the master of unlocking, take it with you. Yeah, I mean, you could pull out so many from Jill Sandwiches to Chris and Chris's laughing. Wesker, you're pathetic. Also, I uh, wrote down this piece of trivia, which is the game's voice acting won a Guinness World Record in 2008 for the worst voice acting in a video game. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's oh. a trivia. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd say of all the ones I've played, it's it, we, we remember it fondly because of their... Uh, because of the nostalgia effect more than anything else, but it was horrific. Yeah, over time it's got it's obviously developed a so bad it's good kind of quality to yeah, it. Yeah, of course. You know yeah. the game wouldn't it wouldn't be the same without it. You know. Yeah. They even kind of like in the remake they kind of some of the voice acting feels like a bit of a throwback to it. It's I always improved, thought they tried but... to touch a little bit on it with like yeah. keeping it like not cheesy but like a little bit over the top when it didn't well, need to be. They stick to a lot of the same lines, don't they? Yeah. But they just deliver them better. Better, basically, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, glad you brought it up, actually, because my next one then is the Nintendo deal. The Nintendo deal uh, that got us the remake yeah. and Resident Evil Zero. You know, that at the time, a short of people were not going nuts about the fact that Nintendo locked Capcom into that deal. But look what we got out of it. And think about that deal now. We would never have got the Resident Evil HD really releases we got now and Zero on the Xboxes and PlayStation. Um, that probably gave Capcom a lot of money to continue the franchise as they did. Yeah. But yeah, like it, they didn't just go, oh, let's do Nintendo deal and then half arse it. And they did half arse it, like they did Resident Evil 2 re release and stuff like that, but they remade Resident Evil 1. Yeah, I mean, we don't know how important like Nintendo and integral they were into making yeah. those. I don't know what the history is behind it, but I imagine they had some state. I mean, they got like exclusivity towards these games. That's right. So they, yeah. must have, they must have had some kind of helping hand towards developing these money. Games. I think they just money. throw a lot of money at it. Yeah, and the fact so... we got a brand new game out of it as well, Resident Evil Zero, which is a solid as fuck game. You know, ignoring the fact that it screws with a continuity. Yeah. Um, as an extra game, it's just great, and it even um had some new ideas. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I like I like Zero. Yeah. I mean, no, I can guess that's, that's a good point. Um, my next one is I love Resident Evil Two, just specifically that game. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, I, you know, what more can I say? You know, it's a highly revered game in the industry and I'm, I'm quite like predictable in that. Most people would probably say it's one of their favorite games, but yeah, it's an awesome game. No, uh, it's not on my list specifically, but um, I'll get, but there is a point of a Resident Evil 2 that I'll get to a little bit. Um, actually, I'll do it now because I 100% agree. Um, I always wonder, like, which is my favourite Resident Evil? Is it the first or is it the second? And truth be told, I think it probably is the second. I think I get more enjoyment out of playing the second than the first because it's a lot more open, a lot more varied bosses, characters and things like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I def I, you know, my memory of one is is not as clear as two because I definitely played through two, like, time and time again. Yeah. You know, you got the you got the multiple scenarios, which it was great great value for money at the time. Yeah, you know, you'd get all the, all that content, and yeah, it's just a, a really great game. It's got great music, and yeah, I mean, it I think it's it still kind of holds up. But we're getting a remake anyway, so yeah. Well, yeah, that should be I'm an really interesting looking forward one. To that. Well, you already brought it up, but what I'll bring it up now that my next one would uh, go down my list to my next further down. Uh, the B stories of Resident Evil Two was a genius idea. Yeah. Um, the game, you know, like Resident Evil One was short enough, uh, short. So like adding these extra where you see it from a different point of view, see it, like as if the other person's playing at the same time, just so clever. 
and it added so much longevity to that game because there were two A stories, two B stories, and then of course you could unlock the extra stuff, your hunk and your tofu stuff and all that. But yeah, the B stories, genius idea. Yeah, very, yeah. Ge- very generous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, is it me? Yeah. Me now. Okay. Uh, um, I I love that it really introduced the world to the survival horror genre. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it's one of my favorite video game genres, and yeah. without it, we wouldn't have got a lot of great games. Yeah. Because uh, it, because of its existence, and uh, yeah, games like Dead Space, Evil Within, Outlast, Soma, and even Bioshock to an extent. A hundred percent. I'm glad you said literally one you named straight at the top. Then so we would never had a Dead Space without Resident Evil. Completely. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. And think about it as well as uh, Resident Evil's success encouraged uh, a certain other company, Konami, to throw their hand at survival horror, yeah. and then we got the Silent Hill series. And I, you know, forget what they think of it now. For a period again, Silent Hill was untouchable. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, you kind of touched upon this anyway, but and I, I missed it, so I'll bring it up now. But every, I have every bit of cheesy nostalgia from the original game. So from voice acting to music to sound effects, just the overall thing from like the the cutscenes, the opening intro that's in black and white, but then cuts away to credits where they're standing there being introduced. Yeah, Chris like, Redfield and like Jill's wearing yeah, like trousers actors, that are, yeah, yeah, like Chris yeah, Jill's wearing trousers that look like they're ten times too big for her. And shit like that, and Barry's like he's got this magnum, and Wesker does the hair thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got <laughs> glasses sure, on. I'm sure there's like a documentary that there's like the behind the scenes of how that all came together. It's fantastic. I'd love to, I'd love to see that. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Um, what do I have next? Um, so, you know, talking about Resident Evil Seven, we did touch on the game briefly. Yeah. but I love um, how successful that that game was. Yeah. Because it really has injected new life into the series. It means that we're going to get more Resident Evil games. Yeah. And it kind of showed Capcom the kind of Resident Evil games we want. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really, I'm, I love the success of Resident Evil 7. 100% agree. For a long time, we were being told by industry experts and stuff that nobody wanted survival horror anymore. I believe this proved everyone wrong because um, Resident Evil 7 is as much survival horror. Like, if you compare the Resident Evils, I compare it to the original games in the survival horror aspect how easy it was to die, ammo, everything like that, the hunting thing. It, it shut a lot of people up, particularly in the industry. It was like, oh, actually, there's still hunger for survival horror. Of course, there is. Yeah. You know, and I'm hoping, I guess you would hope the same thing, that others who hold certain franchises are looking at this and going, huh. So we get, well, let's, well, what I'd settle for right now is uh, re releases of the Dead Space stuff. But I would oh, yeah. certainly like to see them go back to the drawing board. Not Dead Space 4, back to the drawing board for it. You yeah, know? It seems like, I mean, they've been made backwards compatible, but it seems like a no-brainer to release yeah. them again. But yeah, yeah, just, um, I'm glad that it was a hugely successful game. I can't wait to see what they do in, in 8, whenever that happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, good. Um, you know, even, uh, I've even got to say as well, I'll give credit to the DLC of Resident Evil 7. Some of it's a bit iffy, like the card game and all that. But overall, the DLC quality was good. And adding, they gave the extra bit with don't want to say his name spoilers all right spoilers skip if you want but chris yeah. uh, the extra ending bit we um and stuff like that, that was free well i haven't played the dlc yet because it's really expensive it's always really like really quite pricey and also it's weird because you um so you can buy like the gold edition of the game but it, like it's still missing some of the dlc oh so, that's like, a pain yeah it's annoying but if it got you know decent sale i'll play it <laughs> no fair enough yeah. all right well my next one is wesker just Wesker as a villain overall. There's one of the most iconic villains from his cheesy upstart work day, days to his megalomaniac version in uh, Resident Evil 5. Um, yeah, he's just yeah, I mean, a legendary villain. Crazy development of a character, really, from mm. how, he, how he starts out when you first are introduced to him in Resident Evil 1. You could never have imagined, like... You know, you'd end up fighting this guy like a volcano. Let's no. just say, <laughs> like, you can imagine that because, yeah, he's a great, he's a really great villain, iconic. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think this is my my last one, maybe, but um, I love the story of Lisa Trevor that's introduced oh, in the excellent. remake. It's a really great story. And yeah, it's a uh, it's just a sad tale about how she was abducted by Umbrella yeah. and tested on for thirty years, and uh, how it transformed her and like ruined her, her life. And she's this sad, grotesque monster that's skulking around the yeah. the mansion and the grounds and. You know, you hear the wails of her, like screaming for her mother and stuff like that. And I just think it's, and then you find her diary, and you see that there's still scraps of humanity still within her, like just small, small pieces scattered. But ultimately, you know, because I don't think a lot of the time you really see like the human side of of how Umbrella just destroys human no. life, really, because the games are so ridiculous, like so much so that it's always 
comical, you know. Yeah. That was a really like grounded moment where you saw how it destroyed like an individual person's like life. And, yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah. it's a sad story, yeah. And there's there's not even really a happy resolution for her by the end by uh, point in that, you know. Um yeah, it's one of my favourite things that he did in the H D remake was to go, Okay, well, let's not just we make it prettier, let's add yeah. content that actually works into the overall narrative. She's also terrifying. Yes, there is actually yeah, she's yeah, ter- yeah, there is that. That's sad but she's scary. <laughs> right, well, I've got. Uh, I wanted to praise uh, Resident Evil Revelations. I think it's one of the uh, forgotten Resident Evil side games, but Resident Evil Revelations as a Resident Evil game completely surprised me. As linear as it is, I thought it was an incredibly well done game, and they take it onto a boat and updating certain things, but then also bringing other things back, uh, like hunters and stuff like that. I thought it was really, really good. I, I got a lot of praise for Resident Evil Revelations. Yeah, it's, it's a really uh, good game. I mean, I, I think it was originally, uh, was it on the Wii? The Wii, yeah, yeah. And then it, it the eventually Wii. got ported over, yeah. Yeah. Because they, they had to change the controls because I think it was designed to be played around the, oh, the Wii yeah. the remote. And um, yeah, no, it's a, it's a really under, underrated game in the series. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like it. You got any more? I do actually have more, actually. Yeah. Okay. I've just been picking random ones, so yeah, I got lost a bit. But um, I love that it has given us countless memorable monsters. And, okay. And like... Uh, these grotesque creatures that it gave us you know these really cool uh, designed creatures um, yeah so my personal favourites are um, I really love uh, William Birkin of uh, course the character and the story behind him but I, I, I like his transformations and my favourite one is his first transformation when he first I introduced to him in, in Resident Evil 2 and he's like he's this t- like creature that's kind of spliced between the mutation within him and himself still yeah and he has like William Birkin's old face is like in his chest that's right yeah yeah and his new head is sprouted and it, but he's got like tattered bits of lab coat and stuff and it's really yeah, cool. it's yeah, really, yeah. it looks really like when you first when you first see it like it's really like a sight to behold you know? yeah it's quite horrifying that one yeah yeah um also uh well, it's gotta be a hunter right I mean they're iconic as fuck I know a lot of people like prefer lick, lickers, but hunters. Yeah, the hunters are okay. I just think that you know, there's a lot of, like the lizards and stuff, and they look yeah, they're all right. Lickers, all right. lickers are cool as well. But um, I also really like um the the monster Nosferatu from Code Veronica. Oh god, I haven't really thought too much about that. Yeah, yeah, because uh, again, uh, like the story, that was a bitch of a battle because he could knock you off the roof. Yeah, and the story behind him is also like a really interesting story, mm. and I yeah, I think that's a really cool design design monster, and also in a very underrated Resident Evil game as well. Yeah, I mean, it's not really part of my loved ones. But, uh, for a, a reason that will be seen in another video, but um, yeah, a lot of Resident Evil, Red, um, Code Veronica, um, you know, if there was a number eleven on this list, it would be about Code Veronica and about um, the the story told and the twins and how that yeah. plays out and stuff. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. All right, my last one is uh, very simple. Thanks to this, thanks to Resident Evil One, we also got Dino Crisis out of it because <laughs> it basically uses the same engine, same design, same everything from hand movements to the over gesturing and stuff like that, but yeah, we got Dino <clears throat> Crisis out of that. Yeah, a game that people are still crying about, wanting some kind of uh, something to happen with it, you know. Yeah. Which why not? I mean, it's it sounds like you know it could be used easily to make a really a good game these days. It's a really solid concept. I mean, dinosaurs in survival horror. Why not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, capitalize off the popularity of like Jurassic World and things like that. You know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I actually have one last one, Go. and it is. I love how, which is kind of an interesting one to end it on actually, is I oh. love how it's called Resident Evil. Just because like, that's kind of funny, like why is it called Resident Evil? I know the first game's set in a mansion. Yeah. So there's like, you've got that residential thing going Evil, on. yeah. But like, after that, it kind of, is, no, would it you, kind of loses it. I'll ask you the question, <laughs> would you prefer it to have had the Biohazard title or the Resident Evil title? Yeah, I mean, that's interesting, like, why did we get it re- call Resident Evil why didn't we just get a call do we call Biohazard they're, ha- they're probably I'd, ha- I'm, I'd have to read up on that but I'm sure there must be a reason why they decided they didn't want to call it Biohazard in the western world yeah maybe the- I have no idea but yeah I, just, I-, I don't know would I prefer to have Biohazard I, I-, I like the Resident Evil name now obviously yeah it's- of course it's iconic but I just I don't know it's kind of a, it's a, you know, it's a bit of a silly name right I mean, it is it is well, particularly when you're thinking of games like um, Resident Evil 5 and stuff like that it's not like Resident about that it's spread across the res- fucking country Resident about that, no or 6 and it's yeah. different locations and not, not a lot of residential stuff going on in a lot of the games yeah. I mean, maybe the first and maybe the second one I guess you could say and I guess seven but <laughs> yeah but yeah so there we go there's a ten things we love about Resident Evil we'll also be doing a ten things we hate about Resident Evil as always thank you for watching and if you like what we're doing here and you've got your own suggestions chuck them in the comments send them our way drop us an email and we will endeavour to cover it